I'm Tony Allen. I work as a software engineer at Nutanix. There are some really interesting people that make the company what it is, and I wanted to get to know them better. Each episode, we do a blind taste test of three different craft brews while discussing a variety of topics. This is Beers with Engineers. Today, my guest is Laura Giordana and... L- Man, that's a hard one. Laura Giordana, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so you've been at Nutanix like, for ages. How long? How long? Uh, a little over five years. Over five years. That is the longest I've ever heard anyone being in a company, other than like the founders, but hey. You know. It's been a long time. It's been a lot of fun. Cool. Well, so we have three beers. Uh, rumor has it you're an IPA fan. I, I do like IPAs, yes. So the folks at Beauderm curated the best IPA selection. Think, uh, I'm excited. So yeah, we'll start with beer A. You know, let's try it. I have no idea what these are, so we're gonna okay. have to just wing it here. Uh, so cheers. Cheers. I'm a fan. It's good. See, I like IPA, so I'm biased. Yeah. Towards that. So they're all gonna be good. Yeah. yeah. So we got. I have a. I'm question for you. So, uh, so at Nutanix, like, uh, how did you end up here? So what, like, what led to, uh, I guess, joining the company so early on? Uh, so prior to this, I worked for a really small company. Um, they were technically a startup. They were privately funded, though. Uh, I was there for about a year and a half doing technical support for their product, which was not, uh, network monitoring software. Uh, and I actually just got contacted on LinkedIn by a recruiter at Nutanix. I was, you know, getting kind of bored at my at my previous job and was just looking for a change. So it just it sounded like a. A cool place to be, so I nice. just I joined, and it was close to my house, which is an added bonus. Convenient. My commute's right. pretty pretty short, so. So I mean, how many people were on your team at that point? This is uh, like 2011. So yeah, so uh, we didn't really have an official SRE team. Uh, everyone was kind of doing everything at that time. I mean, Sudeesh was like the sales guy, the one sales guy. The one, you know, there was a couple of SEs. So I was one of the first ones, along with uh, Lucas Lundell. We started around the same time. As, as uh, on the SRE team, and then kind of just grew from there. So. All right. Uh, so like, as you've been here, so like, what have you what have you seen and kind of like been proud of, or like that you weren't able to see at other companies? Oh wow! I mean, I've really seen the product just evolve and mature from the ground up, which has been amazing. Like, I mean, you go, go back five years ago, we didn't have like 90% of the features or the functionality that we do today. Uh, so you know, just that in and of itself has been awesome, and just being able to be a part of it and add to it and you know one of my first tasks was actually creating the first documentation uh, for like hardware replacement guides and things like that so it was really really hands-on I had kind of had my hands in a lot of different things and I still I still do so it wasn't like you were taking cases or anything you just did well, yeah all at, kinds of so you were writing docs and at first we didn't really have any customers right so there was not a whole lot of cases to take uh, so yeah nice okay so you had like plenty of time like ramp up and yeah like, <laughs> that's pretty cool so we're going to beer B, huh? Okay. Um, cheers. Cheers. You're supposed to look in the eyes when you cheers. Oh, yeah, I hear it's good bad luck. luck. It's bad luck if you, if don't. you don't. Right, correct. Right. I totally got a lot of, I got bad luck. Mm-hmm. You don't like it? I don't like it as much as the first one. No, yeah, it must be because we didn't look in the eyes, so we got, <laughs> we got a bad beer next, right? I must have like the worst luck ever at this point, because like, like every time I do this show, we always clink, and I'm like, please don't spill, don't spill. <laughs> What else is going on? It's like, what, what, uh, what's your, your current project? So we're, we're looking at a way to kind of leverage uh, Ravella to do kind of like one-click labs for SEs in some way. So it's like a deployment. Yeah, so if they can go in somehow. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on Ravello. We might use you know hardware for it if it's more uh, cost effective. Uh, but we want to kind of build some hands-on labs where an SE goes, okay, I want you know to run a VDI environment, but they don't want to set it up, for example. You know, click and, and you go, things like that. So. We're, we're looking into ways nice. to do that. Yep. So as far as I know, there's like all kinds of stuff to do this like deployment. There's anything DevOpsy. Yeah. They'll deploy like an entire environment out. Um, so Ravel is one of them, I guess. Mm-hmm. So how does that work? What's the um, so the they right now, they use uh, AWS. Okay. At least that's what we use for our our CE instance uh, in Ravello. They're using AWS on the back end. I think you can also pick the uh, the Google Cloud, if I'm not mistaken. But we recommend using AWS. Uh, so yeah, they just provide the resources. You basically enter in what they have a blueprint already for Nutanix CE. Basically, provide it to a customer or whoever. They fire it up uh, in their Revelo account, and they can modify the resources if they want to. And then they just click a button, and then they have a Nutanix instance. So. So people are running CE on virtual machines. Yep. So. Something new every day. <laughs> just learning, learning, learning. Let's 
move on to B or C. Okay. Since that's our uh, our next IPA here. Sounds and, uh, good. Curious to Cheers. See. Cheers. In the eyes. No. <laughs> oh God. See, that's what happens when I try and look people in the eye. I spill the beer. That's pretty good too. It's light. Yeah. So far, the first one's my favorite. Yeah, me too. I like actually. this better than the second one. So, what are you excited about just like in general um, with like technology, right? So like outside of Nutanix, like what's going on in the industry, right, that you're thrilled about here? Um, I'm, I really like the idea of self-driving cars. I don't like driving very Whoa. much. So cool. it'd be nice to just sit back and, That's know. cool, so okay, so tell me, tell me more about this. <laughs> like what, <laughs> what's going on with self-driving cars? Why do you, what do you, uh, What's your draw to it? Uh, so, I mean, it's like taking public transportation, but it's not taking public transportation because you just, you know, walk to your garage, you get in your car, and then you can, like, you know, eat your oatmeal or read a book. I mean, you still have to kind of pay attention, right? I mean, it's but like it's... I, at some point, the technology will get advanced enough where it can, you know, really, you don't have to pay attention so much. Right. I mean, it's like taking an Uber, though, to work, right? But you can sit and, like, Yeah, that's read. true, too. But it's different. I mean, Uber, you get a different person every time. You have to talk to the someone. Experience, yeah, you just talk to somebody. <laughs> Their car might be dirty. I don't know. It's... I mean, the robot car could be dirty, too, right? Somebody <laughs> Well, I mean, like... it's going to be my car. I'm going to maintain oh, it. Oh, your car? Yes. Oh, that's, yes, I yes, see. Yes, okay, correct. so it's like having a robot chauffeur. Exactly. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I see the excitement there. I'm excited yeah. now too. But you're you're in um you're like in Silicon Valley, right? So yes. like like there, that's where all of the self-driving car excitement's happening. Have you seen yeah. anything rolling around? Not that I've noticed. No. No. Um, I've seen a couple like Google cars driving around, like with no nobody in it, which is kind of creepy. But uh, isn't that a self-driving car? Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like no, not at all. But the Google cars. So. Like, does it make you nervous, like, just being in the proximity of, like, a um, A little bit, but from what I've heard, you know, they've, all the accidents they've been in have been caused by other people. So I think overall, if we kind of move towards a self-driving car, you know, thing, there's going to be less accidents overall. Maybe. Maybe or some catastrophic <laughs> bug will just permeate all of the self-driving cars. That could happen, too. Yeah. That's, could go either way. Whatever. It's a toss-up. YOLO, I mean, you know. You, know, <laughs> you got to take risks. Tell me about what you do for fun. Uh, what, what's uh, when you're not working? Yeah, uh, so I'm very active. I like to do anything active. I'm really into CrossFit. Uh, CrossFit, hiking, snowboarding in the winter. You know, we're so close to Tahoe being in the Bay Area. Uh, okay. It's a great place to, to go. Uh, and I love traveling, so. Cool, so where have you been traveling? Oh, well, this year is, yeah. So I've been doing these VDI classes kind of all over the world. So I've been to uh, Amsterdam, Australia. Uh, I was here in June. I also went to um, Washington, D.C., the D.C. office, federal office, visited there. Uh, I'm going to Singapore next month, so. So do you just enjoy being on planes? Is that I don't that like being on planes at all, no. You like the destination? I like the destination, Some people yes. like the act of travel. No, that's no, not as not fun, those, no. yeah. Okay, so let's try beer A again. Okay. And let's, uh, I guess, hazard a guess as to what type of IPA it is, because it's very obvious that they're all IPAs. Yes. Let's go for it. Cheers again. Cheers. No spill this time. Mmm. <laughs> All right. It's pretty good. Yeah. Callan, help help us out, man. It's uh, from South Carolina. Oh, West so close. Westbrook Brewing Company. Aptly titled IPA. <laughs> Sorry, we were right. <laughs> and it's got pale Munich and Carapils malts. And it's supposed to be highly drinkable. That's it, it is. It is, drinkable. It is very drinkable. It was I think it was the favorite. Yes. Amongst the three. So, good. All right. Well, Are we trying B now? Yeah, again? let's try B okay. again. I know this one, this one wasn't our favorite. Mm. Yeah, I still have no idea what it is. I, I honestly can't tell you what it is. It's uh, from North Carolina, uh, Linwood uh, Mosaic Pale Ale. Let's see. Okay, third one. I don't All know. Right. Do we. We didn't like this This was one, right? second best. Oh, second it's a best. Silver metal. I drank the least of it, though. I'm assuming it's some kind of East Coast IPA. It's very light. It's not bitter. Because at all. it's not hop. It's not as hot it's not, forward it's not hot as piece. the others. It's hot. I'm gonna start writing blogs it's soon. This is great. <laughs> it's from North Carolina. <laughs> Trophy Brewing. Trophy. Uh, called the Callista D. Period A. Period B. Period E. Period. Calista Dave. What? <laughs> Whatever. That's 
<laughs> so, so, okay, so as an aside, I, I, I read something on Reddit or something that the breweries are running out of names. So that there's like these lawsuits over like the type of beer. It's like, oh, this is, this is my IPA. I have like X IPA. It's like, well, I have X IPA too. We've run out of names, you know? So like these larger <laughs> breweries will just sue the smaller ones and some of them actually go under. It's sad. There's just so many. All right, well, thanks for coming out. Yeah, of course. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your stay in Durham. I did. Uh, you know, I hope you get to visit more of Europe. Thank you. And, uh, all right, take it easy. All right, thanks. Thank <laughs> you.